Hello and welcome to the Clarity Fiber Arts Podcast. My name is Jody, and I am a knitter and hand dyer coming to you today from Pennsylvania where I live with my husband Chris and our mini dachshund fig. This is the Clarity Fiber Arts Knitting Podcast and as the name implies, it is primarily a knitting and hand dyeing podcast. However, uh, we do get up to some other fibery things from time to time. So if you are a new viewer, welcome and thank you so much for checking out my little corner of the internet where I talk all about all of the things and all the rabbit holes that I am falling down and my current and future knitting projects. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and checking out what I've been talking about and rambling on about. And um, I'm really happy that you're both here, both new viewers and returning viewers. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm gonna talk about my finished objects, one of which I'm wearing. Uh, all This is the only finished object I have to talk about. Uh, and I talked about it in the last episode, but it is finished and I completely love it. It is the Granny Vest by Pia Trans. And so here it is in all its glory. I'm gonna stand up so you can see the full effect of it. There it is. I am wearing it today paired with a button down, um, just sort of a white button down top. Uh, we're getting ready to go to church, and so I thought I would film a quick episode here while I'm pairing it with this type of a shirt. Um, however, I do will insert some footage of me wearing it also with just like a simple white t-shirt underneath, and it's part of the reason why I love this vest and vests in general so much because in this way, I feel that it looks very dressy and dressed up enough to wear to church and things like that um, and then um, just the other day I had it on with a simple t-shirt and a pair of jeans and it looked very dressed down um, very casual and I just loved the look of it and was out for a shopping day with some of my friends and got lots of compliments on the way um, the way that it was the way that it looked basically um, so yeah, this is, um, if you're new to the podcast or if you didn't watch the last episode, I knit this holding um, Crazy Zauber Ball in the colorway Domino. And what I did was, um, in order to get gauge and um, have the required thickness of yarn for this pattern, I held the Zauber Ball double and I pulled from sort of the center ball of one um, ball of yarn and then the outside from the other and I knew that it would stripe just by the way that the Zauber ball does stripe in a sock for example um, however I didn't want that real distinct striping and I didn't want to have to worry about having the striping patterns match and I wanted more of a marled sort of look and and so therefore I just pulled one from the center and one from the outside and I think it came up with this really sort of blended uh, striping kind of a look and I'm gonna come in closer now so you can see sort of how the yarn it's a very it's a very heathered sort of um, marling and then this is actually a faux button band. This is not a real button band. So this is a um, bottom up construction. You start with a bottom, bottom ribbing and you knit in the round for the full length of the vest. Um, and then when you're finished, you put the collar detail. I'm gonna try to come in again. So this collar detail is a really unique um, way. It does require a little bit of hand sewing um, but basically what you do is you pick up I don't I forget how many stitches you pick up but only a couple and then you knit um, down you knit a strip down um, 
that is long enough that it goes all the way around the neckband, sort of crisscrosses and comes out from the inside of the vest and then comes down here to form your button band. So again, this is a really quick knit because you're not fiddling with all of those things or pieces or anything. And so then you just go in, you do have to do, like I said, some hand sewing. Um, you go in, tack down this band that you created all the way around, then you come out from the inside to the front of the vest and come straight down the front with, with the band. And then these are the buttons that I chose. I'm gonna come in close here, try and get near the camera that way. Um, they're really cool. They're kind of like a, like a faux leather looking um, type button. And they're metal, they're a little bit heavy, but again, this is not a situation where we're pulling buttons through buttonholes. And so um, I felt safe getting that heavier style construction of button. And yeah, I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I spoke in the last episode about what's going on right here. Um, when I got to this point in the vest, I felt as though I wasn't sure whether I wanted it to be sort of mismatched. Um, but in the end, I really, really like the way it turned out. And I think that the mismatchedness of it kind of gives it a little bit of a hand knit quality. And I'm totally fine with it. Even looking at it in the camera here, it completely does not bother me at all. And so if you are thinking about knitting a vest pattern, um, I would highly recommend this. It took me about two weeks to knit and, um, and then a little more time with the sewing. The sewing was a little fiddly, but not, not too bad. I'm just not a sewist and so, and so for me, sewing is not <laughs> intuitive, but I literally just did a little bit of a whip stitch around the outside. Um, and then when I came here to the button bands, I just placed a book on the inside so that I wasn't knitting through to the back and sewed those buttons on. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how it, how it turned out. So that is my Granny Vest by Pia Trans. Go ahead and um, check out her pattern on Ravelry or I believe she has a website as well. But I got my pattern off of Ravelry. Okay, so moving on, this is gonna be kind of a brief episode. I just wanted to pop on and show you my, my finished object, but I do have a whip. Uh, again, something I spoke about in the last podcast. I am knitting the Alma Pullover. That's A-L-M-A -A Pullover by Pia Trans. And let me just get this fixed a little bit so it looks nice. And I'm making some really good progress. Here it is. And it is um, a top-down construction, just a kind of a basic pullover. Um, Pia mentioned in her podcast that she needed a basic pullover um, design for a class she was teaching. And she just came up with this one. So it's very simplistic in its construction. However, uh, I needed a bit of a palette cleanser. I needed something simple and I love to pick simple patterns to um, highlight and showcase some really pretty yarns. And so I um, picked this yarn. This is Barocco Mochi yarn. So here it is in the ball. So it comes like this. I'm gonna move it in a little closer. If you can see, it has the little uh, flex in it of different pastel colors. They're actually what I would consider like a little bit of a nep. So this is not um, dyed in this manner. It's almost this, um, it's described when you buy it as a chainette yarn, but, um, and I'm not sure what really is involved in chainette um, construction but it feels to me more like a blown yarn but it's got let me see if I can find one pull one out there's one so it's got these little neps right here that's not really a big one but occasionally you'll get kind of like a, a big one in there 
and um, they're just sort of stuck in the yarn and kind of felt it in there. So it'll be interesting to see um, how this yarn um, holds up with washing and things like that. I'm a little worried um, that it might pill. It is a very, very soft, it is a lovely, lovely yarn to knit with. And one of the reasons it is so lovely is because it's very easy on my hands. Um, this yarn is like a cloud. <laughs> um, it's again categorized as a worsted weight yarn um, and I'm knitting this particular sweater on a size 10 needle um, but it is just it almost feels like unspun yarn. It's got this very light texture and yet um, doesn't break very easily. I haven't had a break at all yet and I've even been sitting and knitting and needed to cut something and didn't have a scissors and didn't feel like getting up. So I've, you know, sort of pulled apart to, to uh, tear the yarn and it takes a little bit of a pull. So even though it feels, it has that unspun feel, which I know is super popular right now, um, I have knit with Newton yarn and was a little frustrated with uh, the amount of breakage that I had in that type of construction. Um, this is this is different and yet the same. The feel is the same. The texture of the fabric that I'm getting is sort of the same as unspun yarn. Um, but it is very light, very airy, and yet very, very strong. And, and just, I don't know, the construction is enough. And I guess it is the chainette construction um, that it doesn't, it doesn't break on me ever. And so um, I am loving this knit. It is knit on size 10 needles and it is flying. This is a week's worth of work. And um, the combination of the needle size, the large needle size and the fluffy nature, I don't know if you can see the, the halo on the yarn, but um, the fluffiness sort of fills in the gaps of the um, larger needle size and it really yields a pretty um, dense fabric and so um, I'm really loving the way this is turning out I did throw it right when a uh, right before I split for the sleeves I did throw it on a barber cord um, to make sure that it fits it's sort of scrunched up on the needles right now but um, the fit is great I am knitting the size 5 I have a uh, the size five is a, oh, let me think, I'm not sure. I have a 38, I'm sorry, I have a 44 inch bust and um, that was the size that was appropriate for me. It's very, very size inclusive pattern. I believe it has 11 sizes to it. And so I'm sort of right in the middle there um, at the 44 inch bust size and so I am super loving this. I am going to power through and hopefully have a finished object for you uh, at the next time that I podcast. And again, this is the Alma Pullover and it's by Sari Nordland. I am knitting it in Barocco Mochi yarn in the colorway Vanilla. Um, and I have to tell you, as I'm knitting this, I'm thinking to myself, how many sweaters can I knit? in this Barocco Mochi. It comes in, I'm not sure how many colors it comes in, but at one point I just stopped my knitting and, and looked up the other colors because I really hadn't investigated that very much. But I did go on to Ravelry and there are lots of really nice and good reviews um, on this yarn. And I just love the texture. Sorry, I have an itch, it's a little fuzzy. <laughs> um, I just love the texture and the fabric that it yields. Um, and I found it funny because when I did go back in to kind of investigate further about this yarn, it said, uh, it described it as your new favorite yarn you didn't know you needed. <laughs> and that's totally true because I'm already um, thinking of other things that I can knit. It's it's super light, not very dense, and it, um, but I feel like it's gonna be warm. Like just under my hands here, I can even feel it. Um, it's alpaca. Let me grab the tag. It's right over here. Hold on one second. Have it? No, I don't have it. <laughs> I cleaned up. Uh, it's um, baby alpaca 
a little bit of wool. I'm not sure what else is in there, but it's this really nice combination of, um, of fibers that yields a very nice effect. And so that is my Alma Pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, and I'll also, just to mention, I really love the way, um, this is my first Sari Nordland pattern, and I love the way she writes her patterns. Um, and to be honest, it's very similar to the way Pia writes her patterns, and I'm starting to find in um, knitting all of these new designs that I'm liking the style um, that they use. They sort of, um, there's a little bit of hand holding, but not too much, but they give these little reminders um, all throughout the pattern of like, don't forget you're doing this, or don't forget you're doing that, or remember this is supposed to be this way, however the pattern goes. But um, I like those little reminders. My brain is sometimes on autopilot. I like to print out my patterns and have them next to me when I'm knitting. And sometimes I'll just pick it up and there'll be that little reminder in there. And so that's really nice for me. Um, I really, really appreciate that because there is no assumption there that you're sort of cruising along and able to <laughs> remember all of those things. And so, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I'm hoping to have it finished the next time I talk to you. And I hope to the weather's getting cold around here, finally. Um, I had last week, oddly, it's November and um, it was in the 70s around here, which is very uncharacteristic. Um, but I was wearing my vest with a short sleeve t-shirt and it was perfect. It was the perfect amount of warmth. And again, I'll throw some pictures in later. All right, so that's it for the hand knitting content. Uh, just a little bit. I know I showed this colorway the last time, but I showed a pair of socks that my hus that were my husband's that were pretty well worn. Um, I've since gone on to dye my colorway by the sea, um, colorway by the sea, Christmas by the sea colorway, uh, again for this year's uh, Christmas shop update. And I went ahead and made a pair of socks with the colorway and just wanted to show you on a nice, um, clean, unworn um, sock that's on a blocker, how this um, yarn works up. And I like it because um, it is, again, as the colorway implies, Christmas by the sea. And so in addition to the hunter greens and um, green color, Christmassy colors that I have in there, I did put a little blue in. And so it's Christmassy, I feel, while not being too Christmassy. Um, and again, you'll see the micro striping um, style of the way my yarn works up. This is Clarity Fiber Arts, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that in the introduction, but I do have a small hand-dyed yarn company called Clarity Fiber Arts. I have a little Etsy shop. Um, it's basically my way of being able to play in the dye pots, um, I have a circular sock machine, and so I do a lot of cranking of socks as gifts and things, and so um, rather than purchase the yarn on my own, and I do do that as well from other dyers, but I decided to learn how to dye, and that became an obsession, and I opened a little Etsy shop. And so this is my colorway Christmas by the Sea. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer so you can see but like I said, I think it's kind of Christmassy without being too Christmassy. And so these are um, a pair of socks that are going to a local artisan shop where I sell my accessories. I also, <clears throat> excuse me, I also um, crank hats on my machine, especially baby hats. Um, I have a 64 cylinder uh, needle, needle, um, construction on my circular sock machine and so with that I'm able to crank baby hats and then when I add the ribber in I'm able to crank adult hats so it's perfect um, and I just like this colorway and I like the way it came out if you're interested in this colorway at all head on over to my Etsy shop that is uh, clarityfiberarts.etsy.com I'll put the link below 
um, to all of my things and all of the yarns and things that I talk about in this episode. Um, so if you're interested in that, head on over. And then one last little shop update <clears throat> that I have. Um, last weekend, my husband was away. I had a little girlfriend um, sort of sleepover party. One of my best friends came over and we had a fabulous night of knitting and crafting and wine drinking. And then the next morning we got up and we dyed some yarn and we had such a good time. And this is what we came up with. She has two boys and is hoping to um, have me make them some hats. They are hunters and are, find themselves in the woods a lot and fishing and all sorts of things. And so she wanted sort of a, if you want to call it camo colorway, she wanted all the fall colors in there and the colors of the leaves. And we just had such a good time hanging out down by the dye pots and I was teaching her all the things that I know about dyeing and she really was proud of what she came up with. So I turned around and made it a new fall colorway because I was really pleased with how it came out too. And so this is Autumn Forest and this is also over in the shop. And I'm gonna zoom in here. It's got some beautiful um, speckling in it, all different fall colorways. It's got cream and sort of a brighter green and then the hunter green in there as well. Um, I don't have a sample of how this knits up yet, um, but I do hope to have that for the next podcast because I am about to embark on knitting um, four hats, four different hats for their family. Uh, I'm going to put pom-poms on hers and then I'm going to knit sort of a beanie style for the boys. And so... Yeah, that is the new um, colorway. This is um, Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. So it's a sock yarn primarily. Um, and it is 100 grams and 463 yards included. So if you're interested in that, that too is listed over in the shop. Go ahead and get yourself some because I, I went ahead and dyed some more. Um, I'm glad I wrote down what I used and I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. Okay, so that is it. Bit of a, a small episode, 22 minutes we are at. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed chatting with you today. I'm so happy and honestly proud to show you my granny vest by Pia Trans. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed watching this and got some yarn combination ideas from some of the things that you have seen. I will talk to you very shortly and I hope you guys are having a great day and finding some time to grab your knitting and get working on some of your projects. Take care, bye bye.